Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Dominica jumped to 19. Government will no longer absorb quarantine costs for visitors with COVID-19 and MP for Salibia tells constituents not to be distracted by opposition efforts to recruit them to protest Prime Minister's residence. The details coming up. It only gets better with flu. Blow terms and conditions apply. Are you still washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Health authorities announced to one of Dominica's fears on Thursday a new case of COVID-19 placing the island's total number of confirmed cases at 19. The recent confirmed case is an imported case. Uh, he's a British national. He arrived in Dominica on August 10. Prior to arrival, he had two PCR done and which were negative. On arrival, the rapid test was conducted and it was negative as well. He was on home quarantine for the most part. Currently, he's asymptomatic, and he has been asymptomatic all through his quarantine phase. He was admitted to the COVID center last night, and he will be monitored for next 14 days at the COVID center. Contact tracing is ongoing. About 690 travelers have entered the country since borders reopened, one of them being positive. All visitors to Dominica should have a PCR test done three days prior to arrival. Dr. Amid says there are nationals of certain neighboring countries who are exempt. These citizens should have been residing in these countries for the past 21 days. The countries include Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and Grenadians. These countries are part of the Dominica travel bubble based on the following criteria. One, these countries do not have community or local transmission uh, based on the latest report from WHO. And these countries have zero local transmission in the past seven days. Those who fit the criteria of Dominica travel bubble do not require PCR testing prior to arrival. On arrival, they will, be, they will go through a primary screening process, meaning rapid tests will be conducted at the airport. All travelers coming from the high-risk countries are required the following. To have a negative PCR results that taken, meaning swabbed, or sample taken 72 hours prior to the travel date and mandatory quarantine at the government quarantine facility or COVID certified hotel or guest houses for five days on arrival. All travelers must submit online qu questionnaire and get screened. And once one is, is screened, approval or disapproval notification will be sent out. One must keep a copy of the PCR result and approval notification prior to the boarding because these documents will be checked during embarkation and on arrival 
must submit them to the Port Health Officer. The health questionnaire can be accessed via official website, that is domcovid19.dominica.gov.dm. Government will no longer absorb the cost of accommodation and care at its quarantine facilities for visitors and returning nationals. From the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, government has been footing the bill, but as Dr. Laura Esprit explains, this is about to change. As it relates to fee structure, that's also another very important component. For ease of reference, the billing structure for travelers admitted to the government operated quarantine facility is as follows, with the exceptions that same will be paid up with the expectations, sorry, expectations that same will be paid upon arrival at the facility. So because you are at the government operated facility, that means you would have been swabbed for PCR testing. The cost of the PCR test is a hundred EC dollars of 40, 40 US dollars. The fees for quarantine, which applies to the, the very first night, and that's for accommodation and sanitization, that would cost 400 EC or 150 US dollars per person. Again, this is for the first night. Any additional night that would cost 225 EC dollars or 90 US dollars, and that's just for accommodation. But the rates for meals will be as follows. 15 EC dollars or 6 US dollars for breakfast, 20 EC dollars or 8 US dollars for lunch, and 20 EC dollars or 8 US dollars for dinner. Government is approaching the matter with a greater sense of seriousness. Consequently, certain penalties have been approved for those who fail to comply with the recommended protocols. The penalty for non-adherence to mandatory quarantine in the Commonwealth of Dominica is 5,000 EC dollars or six months imprisonment. And the penalty for providing false information on your health questionnaire would be 1,000 EC dollars or three months imprisonment. Last but not least, let me encourage you, the public, to remain in a state of vigilance. Travelers and the public alike are encouraged to adhere to the public health and social guidelines previously reiterated, and these include, of course, wearing of your face mask at all times, even during the arrival process, up to departure, as well as in public places. Additionally, observance of physical distancing is important, practicing good respiratory etiquette and personal sanitization, and of course, following the instructions provided by your health teams and the Ministry of Health by extension. The police, meanwhile, have stepped up surveillance at Dominica's borders in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Head of the Criminal Investigations Department, Superintendent of Police Davidson Valerie says a number of individuals have been apprehended. We have been relentless in our border patrols, both on sea and on land, to prevent or intercept persons who seek to enter Dominica illegally. To this end, I can report that six vessels have been intercepted and 25 persons were taken into custody and dealt with. All of the persons who have been taken into custody were quarantined. While citizens and visitors are allowed to enter Dominica and welcome to Dominica, they must adhere to the protocols in place for anyone entering Dominica. No one will be allowed to enter Dominica except through a legal port of entry. Consequently, I wish to warn the people involved in the illegal movement of persons in and out of Dominica that they must cease from this unlawful practice immediately. The police will utilize whatever means that are reasonable and necessary to prevent or disrupt anyone found or suspected to be engaged in the illegal entry into or departure of persons from Dominica, or anyone involved in the facilitation of illegal entry or departure 
from Dominica. The head of the CID is appealing to the public to support the police efforts to stamp out illegal entry into the country. I appeal to the general public, please report to your nearest police station anyone or any activity involving the illegal entry of persons into Dominica or the illegal departure of persons from Dominica. The police are partnering with the Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment and will not be permitting any public activity which is expected to generate large crowds. Persons who are being placed in isolation or quarantine under the regulation are wanted to comply with the requirements in place. Anyone who absconds or attempts to abscond from isolation under surveillance or quarantine imposed under the regulation commits an offense, in which case the police have the authority to take this person into custody to have him or her returned to a suitable place specified by the medical officer. The police may use reasonable force in the execution of the function under the regulation. Finally, let us all co collaborate to ensure that we protect Dominica and prevent or minimize any possible spread of COVID-19 virus in Dominica. And the parliamentary representative for the Salibia constituency, Kozia Frederick, has denounced opposition protests against the residence of the Prime Minister at Mont Daniel. Mr. Frederick has urged his constituents not to be distracted by opposition efforts. Here is his statement. I am very disturbed that there is a mobilization of residents of the Karanago territory and at Kinson village to participate in protest actions against state-provided accommodation for the Prime Minister. Those who participate in that particular action are clearly not representative of the people within the constituency because many of us understand the need for the office of our island's leadership to be treated with respect and dignity. I strongly urge the people of the Salbe constituency to continue to focus on the developmental work which commenced under this administration, all of which have significantly improved our quality of life. We must be reminded of public assistance to the elderly, universal secondary education, sponsored state college education, the Pete Latchin Eradication Program, small business financing, the housing revolution, and infrastructure developments inclusive of roadworks and other public amenities. It is very important that the people are not sidetracked by the representative of the parliamentary opposition in the Salbe constituency on the heels of a very successful Indigenous People's Day, where I assisted to continue to raise awareness and protect the rights of the world's Indigenous population. There appeared to be absolutely no mobilization by this representative to encourage supporters to attend that event, which also acknowledged the achievements and contributions that indigenous people continue to make to improve world issues like environmental protection and human rights. This particular behavior by the political op opposition should not be tolerated by citizens of this country because the leadership of the government continue to enhance the quality of life, promote economic opportunity, and carry out the responsibility to protect and improve the trust assets of all by providing better services, opportunities, Hello. and results within the government. I am therefore urging my constituents to desist from participating in this present activity or any others aimed at destabilizing the country and hindering the progress outlined in this year's budget for the advancement of the Salve constituency and Dominica in general. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this.
or switch now to win. It only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. Are you still washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID-free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. Minister for Education Octavia Alfred says embracing online learning in this era of COVID-19 makes sense, but traditional methods of teaching continue to produce results. With the advent of COVID-19, there have been discussions over the introduction of blended courses where a portion of the traditional face-to-face -face instruction is replaced by web-based or online learning. Schools are due to reopen on the 7th of September. Before COVID, we were already well on our way. As a matter of fact, before Maria, we were almost there. And Maria put everything down. And before COVID, we were almost there because there were a number of schools who actually did their exam completely online and some partially online. Um, yes, this has fast forwarded us, um, but... While we move forward at a quick pace, we have to also consider other things that children understand what their digital footprint is, that they understand what it is to be responsible digital citizen, that we also put stop, um, measures in place that will help children and their parents because parents want to be involved. And online learning does not necessarily mean sitting in front of a laptop all day long because our textbook, we still have them and we will use them. Online learning does not necessarily mean that you need internet for 12 hours because you can download your work at school on your device and go home and work without internet. Parents want to be involved and we have to also ensure that children can still socialize because some people can just become nerds mm -hmm. and we have to ensure that school, the face-to-face, -face, the physical, the interacting, the being with the teacher, the learning to sit properly and learning to to get angry and address it well. All that, we will still need that. So the school and the face-to-face -face will always have a place, even as we engage our students to help them to become global digital citizens, we will still need our interrelationship skills, which are actually built at school. And I want to, which is, is noteworthy, that five or six of our top schools in grade six national as assessment, these communities do not have internet. But these five or and six, I think five or six of them, they were in the top ten. So that is also showing us that if we use what is provided at school level well, we can still succeed. Because those six schools didn't have internet in their communities, but yet they're among the top ten schools. So sometimes we place a lot of emphasis on the internet and, and, the, and the device, but there's still always ways of incorporating and phasing out. And there will always be a place for books. There will always be a place for teachers there will always be a place for school. Dr. Blaise has some advice for parents when interacting with the schools. I want to call out to our communities, our parents, to really work with us in supporting the school. Um, when you're getting to the school environment as parents, ensure that you go there only for essential activities and you wear a mask um, because we know that we're going to experience challenge, challenges with some of mm. our parents. I'm not wanting to do that. Remember, it's for your protection and the protection of students as well. So it's only essential activities at the school for parents and if you're going there, please ensure that you have your mask with you. Individuals on the home quarantine must adhere to certain protocols. Dr. Gilda Nesti is in charge of the Office of the Director of Primary Healthcare Services. She leads the team responsible for monitoring of individuals on home quarantine. After completing primary or secondary screening and after being given days of quarantine period required, the traveler is escorted to their home or quarantine address. From the time the traveler leaves, he or she is advised to go directly to his or her designated address. On arrival home, 
or at their quarantine address, the traveler is expected to sanitize and isolate themselves from other members of their family or members of their household. If they must interact with family members, they are expected to wear their mask at all times. Travelers must undergo and document their daily temperature checks. Having a handheld thermometer at home is therefore recommended. All travelers will be contacted by the district health team in the area that they reside. They will be contacted by phone initially and will be subsequently subjected to scheduled and unscheduled home visits. After successfully completing the said days of home quarantine, the traveler will be, dis will be discharged from further follow-ups by the district team. Travelers are also encouraged to monitor themselves closely for the development of any signs or symptoms of SARS-CoV-19. These include, but are not limited to, fever, sore throat, dry cough, shortness of breath, and also loss of taste and smell sensation. If any of these symptoms are present, travelers are advised to remain home or at the quarantine address and call the hotline immediately at 448-2151 or 611-3254. There are protocols in place for those planning on leaving the country as well. In order for us to continue to enjoy the liberties we truly cherish, our travelers' compliance with home quarantine is indeed critical. For those intending to travel out of the island, a pre-travel screening process is necessary. This includes calling the health center at 611-3905 to schedule an appointment for a PCR or nasopharyngeal test. Please note, the onus is on the traveler to find out for themselves the requirements for travel to their final destination, as well as any country for which they will be in transit. The client is then required to pick up their, rec their requisition form at the Roseau Health Center. Once the requisition form is secured, the traveler is expected to pay their fees for their PCR tests at the Accounts Department of the Dominica China Friendship Hospital. The traveler then returns to the health center on their scheduled date. The PCR test is administered and the turnaround time for the test result is 48 hours. That too is still dependent on the volume of tests to be done on that specific day. The traveler therefore is expected to schedule their travel date and the available PCR testing date accordingly. And rain bands extending from tropical storm Laura moved across Dominica Friday producing moderate to heavy showers. A flood warning was in effect for Dominica from midday to 6 p.m. on Friday. Head of the ODM, Fitzroy Pascal, said the flood warning could be extended into Saturday. Tropical storm Laura is expected to generate shower and thunderstorm activity across Dominica, even though the center of the system is expected to pass north of the island. These conditions are expected to continue into Saturday. The ODM is reminding the public to exercise extreme caution during the remainder of today and into Saturday as you go about your activities. Be mindful of hazards including flash flooding along waterways and low-lying areas that could be life-threatening. Be ready to move to a safe area if rising water is observed. Use roadways and especially bridges with caution and be aware of water-covered roads and bridges. Landslides and rock falls due to heavy rainfall, especially in the usual vulnerable areas. Fisher folks must also exercise extreme caution as increased wave heights are expected. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better.
washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID-free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. $30,000 in cash, oh, yeah. two bags of money, plus a grand every Friday. Or switch now to win. It only gets better with flow. Flow terms and conditions apply. A new in home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan faster, more reliable Wi Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With Flow, it only gets better. To end the news, a look again at the headlines. The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Dominica jumps to 19. Government will no longer absorb quarantine costs for visitors with COVID-19. And the MP for Salibia tells constituents not to be distracted by opposition efforts to recruit them to protest Prime Minister's residence. You may access the news on our YouTube channel on behalf of the production team. I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Have a good weekend.